Mr. Fitzy and Emilio's drawing show. Bust out your crayons, come on, let's go. Mr. Fitzy and Emilio's drawing show. Time to let your imagination flow. Get ready, get set, let's go, go, go. Hi, welcome to the Mr. Fitzy and Amelia Drawing Show. I'm not really going to be on this. Here, scooch in. You're not on now. <laughs> Come closer so we can see. Amelia's going to be here at the start. That's not easy. She made a book. In second grade, that's the one that I'm doing now. And since it's spring break, we're doing these doodles each day. And guess what we're drawing? You can see from the title of the book, Terrific Butterflies. But a uh, butterfly. And another artist <coughs> made this. And my mom wanted it for work. We saw that, but uh, she put the caterpillar after the pupa. Look at the last pupa. Uh, uh, yeah, and then I was like, I, I don't think that's right. And then we had my dad had a switch. Yeah. Like, so we got the eggs. Caterpillar. Chrysalis. Butterfly. Butterfly. And we're gonna. What type of butterfly is this? A monarch. Yes, and she is definitely our butterfly expert. Uh, I think you can gotta take this off and one off. Oh yeah, hold on. I'll take that off in a minute. Oh, oh, thank you. I can do it. Okay. And do we still have to finish a little coloring on that? You bet. Yeah. Let's put that to the side. I didn't. He didn't even get to colorize. Let's look at the poster that you made. Because this can help when we draw our butterfly. There is when she lays all her eggs, she dies. Very sad. Very sad. Some of the butterflies camouflage, some don't. And abdomen, abdomen thorax, wings, antenna, head. Yeah, they're insects, right? And they have three body parts. And then some, I didn't know this. There's a lot of stuff you taught me about butterflies. Some butterflies are... Poisonous. Poisonous. Yes. I think that is the monarch butterfly. I don't think they're poisonous. Some butterflies, though. Yeah, I don't know what kind, because I don't really remember. Okay. I don't think we're going to have time to go through that. Yeah. Like, we're Not just going to show something. We'll show you, show some I'm of the sketches that you worked on in there. Did this one. And whose class are you in? Miss Redding. So, can you wave hi to Miss Redding? In case she's watching, say hi, Miss Redding. I'm sure she misses you. that one. And, oh, I forgot to do that too. A lot of sketches and a lot uh, of... Them. I don't really... I can like do that. Some butterflies look like owls. Like, to scare... Predators. Yeah. Oh, I... Uh, one kindergartner that I met, or first grader, I think it was a first grader, uh, told me that I... Uh, some, she has butterflies at her house, and she is going to let them go. Oh, yeah. When it gets. Sometimes uh, kids do that. They die. science project. Ten eye. But. Ooh, nice. A ten eye right, wing. It. Six legs. Pupa. And yeah. And this you did. Nice. A glossary. Okay, so. Really cool. Really okay. quick show that. The crystal is the same thing as a pupa. And it is one stage. And a caterpillar is one stage. 
and every single one. One, every one of this four one. This is the first part, second, third, and fourth. And what do we and call this? The circle. Of what? The circle of life. It's the life cycle. Very good. Like All right. Life this so, long. I'm going to excuse you because it's spring break. Wait, first you have to say hi to Miss Rhythm. Hi. <laughs> Thank you, Amelia. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Now, let's get down to drawing our butterfly. All right, I'm going to start with the head, because like Amelia taught us, Butterflies have three body parts. Uh, I, I don't think I can get my coat on. I think okay, you can. done. So now let's make the head that. kind of like a circle, but a little bit like a circle that goes like a bean shape. I think that looks like a good head for my butterfly. Then we have the thorax. an oval and the abdomen. Might get a little light inside. That's okay. Okay. And that's another oval. There's a little point down towards the bottom. Now the wings. Butterflies are symmetrical. So what happens on one side, the mirror happens on the other side. Human beings are symmetrical. We have an eye on one side, an eye on the other side, an ear on one side, an ear on the other side. Not absolutely symmetrical, but generally, basically. Okay, so for the wing, So then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I have to move my hand up and follow along to what I did. But they don't end up looking perfectly symmetrical. That's okay. Butterflies are living things. They're in nature. They live about mm, two to six weeks, and they migrate. All, from all over down to Mexico. All right. There we go. Now it's time for our antenna. So we're going to need a lot of orange and yellow for our monarch butterfly. Got to put a happy little cloud. I think it's cloud week on the Mr. Fitzy and Amelia drawing show. Now, those wonderful designs of our monarch. We know one thing. Let's give our monarch some eyes. The one thing we know is that the monarch has a lot of black. Gonna get some good use out of this thick black marker. It has a 
wedge tip. So when I put it down flat, it can color in quickly. There are also all over little white spots. I think I'm going to use a smaller marker when I want to do a smaller area. I have more control. I need to put some of those white circles on the head too. Okay, I'll get back to shading in the rest of the head in a minute. I might even want to try a black crayon for that. I really like shading in with crayons because it'll make your drawing look more interesting. Now let's think about those wings. Kind of all around the edge, you can have lines kind of like that. And this thick band, these thick bands up at the top are going to be black. And they're going to have circles for the white spots. So I think it's a good idea to draw them in so that you know just where they are. And then we divide up the wings into shapes. These black lines kind of hang like ropes. So it's the top part of the wings and the bottom part of the wings. So let's see. And even though they're symmetrical, they don't have to be exactly perfectly the same. Maybe on your butterfly, they look a little bit different. Or maybe you might make a butterfly that's not even a monarch. Butterflies can be all different varieties and all different types. There we go. That's kind of divided up pretty well. I'm adding in a lot of drawing and designs of this part. And then later, I go into color. Okay, now on the wings that come down, think about a triangular shape that goes like that. Oops. It's not Wednesday until I drop a cap, or maybe a dandy. These fall down like ropes, just like up top. There we go. It takes a while to draw a butterfly. And I did a lot of research last night, and I made a sketch. So it makes it easier when I go to do the show. And Amelia did a lot of research. I think that's something that sometimes people don't realize about artists. There's a lot of research. Whoop. Who's that? Guess who's back? It's OK. I have to tell you something else, so it's done. OK. So one of the things that 
we got for Amelia during this e-learning part of our lives is a sketchbook. And uh, Ellie got a sketchbook too, and I have a sketchbook. And one of the things that's real important is that you practice drawing. It helps calm us down. Don't go to sleep on me. Okay. And also teaches us how to make art because not everybody feels like they're an artist. But there was a German artist named Joseph Beuys and his famous idea was that everyone was an artist. No matter what you do, if you're doing it creatively, that leads to a better society and helps the world solve their problems. So now more than ever, we need to get in touch with our artistic self. And this show is for artists of all levels. On my website and in the description of the episodes on YouTube, I'm going to be adding extensions. I've done it for a few of the shows, but I'm going to be doing it for some more. So, a butterfly, scientifically, we can learn a lot about the life cycles. But in a bigger sense, we can think about transformation and the stages of our life. And how do these concepts apply as we're staying at home? I always like to remind people it's not forever. But it's difficult. There we go. I'm kind of filling in the exoskeleton. <laughs> There's another good art word. When they first made skyscrapers and structures like the Statue of Liberty and the skyscrapers in Chicago and New York City. They learned to use steel to build taller buildings that could go higher into the sky. And a lot of times when artists are making a sculpture, they have to use an exoskeleton to hold up the weight, depending on what materials they're using. But we can think about drawing in a sculptural sense. So right now, I'm giving you the frame of the butterfly. And then later, we get to do the coloring part. I always like to say that I make art like I shovel snow. We live in Chicago, and it's snowy. It was snowy on Monday. The snow seems to have gone away for now, so that's good because spring is in the air. But when I shovel snow, I don't do it in an orderly way all the time. Sometimes I might shovel the end of the driveway, then at the top, then at the middle, and on my drawing, I jump around a lot. And that's okay. Maybe you don't. Maybe you fill it in in a more orderly way. Every artist works a little bit differently. And that's okay. How's he looking? Pretty good. 
if I do say so myself. Now, one of the things that Amelia reminded me of when I was reading through her terrific butterfly book is that butterflies have scales on their wings. So when I go to work on the scales, I'm going to think about that scale shape of the letter U and layering them inside. Another thing you can do to extend these lessons is to do a series of drawings. Whether you do different kinds of butterflies or if you do other animals that transform, bears that hibernate, and we'll be doing some different animals on future shows too. And we may even draw some artwork that's more abstract. Okay, so here we go. Gotta get my cap. Let's put a few of the scales in and I'll finish this guy for you for tomorrow so you can see how he turns out. I always tell my students at Spalding School to use the right tool for the right job. And for drawing in my scales, I'm using a marker. And then for shading them, I'm going to use crayons because crayons just work so much better for shading. There's part of my scales. And let's see. I'll color the tips with a marker just for the tippy tip. There we go. And now let me reach over. Pull out a couple of interesting oranges. Excuse me. Okay. And this is where layers can really make your butterfly look interesting. This is a yellow orange. They call it tangerine. But I know one thing about the monarch is they just really have that deep, deep orange. So I'm going to keep layering until I make that darker and darker. There we go. That's the kind of orange that I wanted. And I can still see the lines for the scale through there, too. Well, I want to say Thank you for joining us on the Mr. Fitzy and Amelia Drawing Show. I hope you have a wonderful Wednesday and get lost in your drawing with your family. You are all artists, and now is the time to get out there in your home, out there in your house, out there in your yard. So, did you have any trouble? I hope your butterfly isn't botched. I bet it looks great. Hold it up. Mr. Fitzy's magic eye and see.
tomorrow we're going to Mr. Fitzy and Emilio's drawing show. Bust out your crayons. Come on, let's go. Mr. Fitzy and Emilio's drawing show. Time to let your imagination flow. Get ready. Get set. Let's go, go, go.